Before we start, we would like to honor the ancestral guardians and caretakers of the land. Stratford Festival is on the lands of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Wendat, and the Atawandrong. So welcome everyone. Sego Ani, I'm Elaine Bomberry, Anishinaabe Cayuga from Six Nations, but here on Squamish Nation territory. And I'd like to welcome you all, beautiful ladies. How wonderful to see you all. Wow. And I'm going to go through and introduce you by your character name, your name and your character name. Gloria Miguel, Palaji Patchnose is in the house. <laughs> Miriam Miguel, Philomena Moosetail. <laughs> and we have Monique Mojica, Maria Del Star Blanket. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Anna England, Annie Cook. Where's Annie Cook? <laughs> Sally Singel, Jean McGinn Peterson. Hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So great to see you, ladies. You all look so wonderful. And you too. So wonderful. wonderful. Yes. Um, I want to know um, maybe we could start with you, Monique. Um, I'm just wondering, like, what did you, did you, who did you meet first? Thompson Highway or the script to the Res Sisters? Oh, definitely Thompson Highway. I met Thompson Highway 1982. It was just, it was before the so-called Native Theater explosion, just on the cusp. Um, there was the Indigenous Peoples Theater Celebration. It was the World Indigenous Peoples in 1980 and 1982. Oh, and that's I mean, Trent. Yeah, the first one was at York and the second one was at Trent. Spider Woman performed at the, the second one. So I remember him at Harbor Front. So that had to be 1980. I met him in 1980, that, the first one. And at the time, he and Renee were just beginning to, to work and to work together. And shortly after the second one in 1982, Thompson asked me to, if I would come to Toronto to be, at that time, would have been the second AD of Native Earth that was just starting. So I definitely met Thompson first. I met Thompson at that conference. Uh... They were both there, Renee and uh, Thompson. And then I met him, uh, Native Earth was doing something. And I think Monique asked, asked me to come in as a director. Is that right, Monique? Mm -hmm. And that's where I met uh, both. But no, Renee was in New York for a while and he was giving, giving a dance class at the community house in New York City. And Gloria? Well, I, I seem to remember I went to a small festival in Toronto where I met uh, Thompson and we sang and danced all night. And he, he was in a white suit with his hair out. And uh, that, that and I went there alone with uh, Penne sent me from New York City. And I did a, a little bit of a one woman show and stuff. And uh, I don't know what year that was. It must have been 1980. Was, 1980. It yeah, was yeah. just... Uh, I, I was the only one there for my family. And you, Sally, what came first, Thompson Highway or the Red Sister script for you? I guess Thompson. Uh, Larry and I did the uh, MFA program at York together. That's where I met him. And then we formed Act IV with Tony Dunn and Eugene Stickland. And... Um, the first show that that company did was the family at uh, Pass Marai, and Thompson uh, composed the music for that show. And you, Anne? Uh, me, I think I met them both about the same time because he approached me at uh, Theatre Pass Marai where I was working on something and uh, gave me the script. And um, I read it and I thought it was just perfect, fabulous. So uh, that was, yeah, about, about the same time. Oh, right on. Yeah. Um, I would like to acknowledge, too, the wealth of artistic theatrical talent that everyone can see right now. And the histories that you ladies have, Spider-Woman Theater, the Miguel's, Monique, you know, like your family, mother, 
daughter, auntie, all together, you know, form this beautiful company. And you really too, I feel you, you know, you definitely gave the boost like to get Native Earth up and going. And as well, Sally and Anne were involved with Act IV and we're first, uh, it was a co-production Native Earth with Act IV. So we all work together and I just want to acknowledge all your power and your, your vision for your work in theater and how that really did help get Native Earth and the original production of the Red Sisters off the ground. So kudos to you ladies. Thank and you. you were the producer of that, eh? You and Denise for the longest time were the only producers that we had in the in the theater community. And um, you all played a role with the development of the script for the Red Sisters. Workshop. Can you speak oh, to yeah. your yeah, your experiences, yeah, about this development? Sally, maybe you want to start. Well, I remember that we we workshopped the script and, you know, Thompson was there at every rehearsal. And I think that it just all coalesced opening night at the Cultural Centre on Spadina. I mean, I'll never forget it. You know, we did the show. We I, I, I didn't really appreciate, I think none of us did appreciate like how, what a gift we had until that opening night. And after the performance, the audience just exploded in this thunderous applause. And it was just like that, you know, from from then on. Yeah, it was uh, it was hard at first for us to get reviewers to come out because they said we weren't in a legitimate theater. We were in a community center. Right. And they thought, oh, you know, what are they doing over there? So finally, it was the second week that finally the uh, reviewer from the star came out and just went Res Sisters is theater at its best. And you girls were all on the headline there. And, and we couldn't we had so much lineups and everything eh? but before that we were running on the street trying to get people come on if you want to come and see a play <laughs> you know? I remember to fundraise i know that we fundraise in the play with the you know the blueberries and all that but i remember the actual fundraising that we did to put on that show we had a dance marathon do you remember that yes, that's right that's, that's when i first met gloria eschkebach larry introduced us yeah that was just amazing also at that time, it wasn't only like the, the mainstream theater um, conduits that were not used to, to us, is that we had to build audience among our community. That our, our, our folks were not accustomed to going into theater and it continued, that continued even into the national tour where I remember, Muriel, you were on the street trying to- <laughs> That's right. Into, we were sneaking people into the back door of the <laughs> warehouse because the Winnipeg season ticket holders would not come see a native play, and we were sold out playing to native to absolutely empty houses. So we were pulling people in off the street to <laughs> put them in an office. So, Taxi cab drivers, people just walking by. Hey, you want to you play? <laughs> we all had that experience, eh? Roping them in. <laughs> <laughs> but we all did a great job of doing that because once the thunderous applause started, it didn't stop. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, once, the, and, and once the audience members were, were, you know, they saw the show, they were enchanted. Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, your characters, what stood out? What did you enjoy most about playing your characters? I'll get each of you to start. So maybe we could start with Muriel. Having the orgasm on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That whole, that whole speech about describing the, the bathroom and the throne. <laughs> oh, I just love that. When I, when I finally, when I came across what I really wanted to do, it was, I looked forward to that every night. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Gloria? Oh, so many things. The character itself of, of, of an older woman in a, uh, still full of life, sitting on a roof, it, it was, was a wonderful character even to, to go into. And, and, uh, and, and I'm sure it changed from then to now because, um, uh, I think uh, the, an older woman has much more say now. I, I just enjoy thinking about how, as an older woman, I would do it now because now I'm, I'm very old. And, and, uh, and life and even reservation life is different 
uh, for my urban Indian life, and 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 I'm sure, and I did get to finally through the years. I got to Manitoulin Island, and it was so different from what I thought it would be. <laughs> now let's say that there's a, the house that Gloria lived in, and so forth, yeah. and, and that was exciting. But it was so different, my imagination. But um, we get to know uh, the people in Canada and. And the different experiences I had as a person in Canada doing that show. It was just, you know, walking down the street and then people say, where are you from? And I tell them, what are you doing here? And I'll tell them, you know, it changed my life because it lasted so long. Yeah. And we traveled. We were in Scotland, for goodness sakes. You know? <laughs> yeah. It was just fantastic. I'll never forget it. And Sally? What did you love about Ja? Um, well, uh, I, I loved uh, playing her because she was uh, such an innocent. And, and I always felt that that's why Nana Bush appeared to her. And, you know, we had that interaction uh, on the roof when she tells her, her, her traumatic story about being raped. And, and I always carried the, um, uh, you know, the, the uh, the origin of that. I, I remember Thompson told me that it was based on a true story. This young girl, Betty, was savagely raped by two white men, uh, boys, uh, and she was left to die. And and she and this happened in the woods. And she, you know, struggled to the side of the road, and she just, you know, perished there. And so I, um, I always had that you know, in me that, uh, you know, that information uh, when I played her. And I love the interaction with all the other women. She had such exuberance. And uh, it was just just great to, you know, play off the other characters on stage. And, uh, you know, of course, the conflict with uh, Veronique St. Pierre and, you know, yeah. <laughs> always yes. wanting to restrict her. I just, it was just fantastic. It, it was, it was life altering for sure. That whole experience. Right and you, Annie Cook? Anne Cook. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Well, the interesting thing about Annie Cook was uh, the, the instruction was that she moved really fast, talked really fast. And I, in my ignorance or whatever, had never met uh, a Native person who talked fast. So, except for Thompson. <laughs> really fast. So I used to hang around him a lot and try to get his speed. <laughs> And and I didn't realize till I read the script uh, yesterday, or the day before, that Annie Cook was such uh, an alcoholic. I mean, I knew that, but I didn't know it till about halfway through the run when uh, Margaret Coastry said to me on the side, "You know, I think Annie Cook drinks too much." So that was uh, very interesting. But she she was in rough shape, Annie Cook. Basically, if I ever had to play her again, which I never will, but uh, I will keep that in mind. <laughs> Yeah, it was quite uh, the magical time for sure. You know, yeah. we were on the the edge of something new, and Indigenous theater was opening up like never before. And to to have the high, work with the Highway Brothers, you know, uh, with Thompson and Renee and uh, Larry Lewis, and of course Larry and and Renee are our past now. But um, I want to know: Can you share a little story about both Larry and um, Renee, or one of them, uh, Monique? I was going to answer your first question. Okay. <laughs> and, um, oh, yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. We got to go back to that. Maria Dell. I, what I enjoyed most was dancing with Renee oh. and that release. And that's what we worked on was the, the character, the bird leading Maria Dell to the release. So we choreographed that together. And that, that was certainly a high point. The other really high point was putting the language in my mouth, having to learn so much uh, Cree and the being, being very nervous about it in that first monologue, but realizing when we got to Winnipeg on the national tour and I said the first line of the show and the audience just went up. And I realized, oh my God, they understand what I'm saying. <laughs> the first time that I was in front of an audience that was understanding the words I was saying. And to me, that was really powerful. It almost threw me because it was the first time that people were not just sitting there receiving sounds. 
they were receiving language. <laughs> it's so interesting, like over the years, like lines still pop back in my head and I was in the office. I can imagine for you ladies <laughs> what that's been like. But yeah, I was wondering if you could share a story. And if um, um, I'll start with you again, uh, Monique, like if you have a little little story you'd like to share of, of Larry, working with Larry and uh, Renee and Thompson. I remember working with uh, the rhythm because we had that drummer on stage. Oh, David Tomlinson. And the, yeah, Tomlinson and the whole, the whole drum kit. And that Thompson, I remember Thompson leading us like the Pied Piper. And he said, this is the rhythm. Da, 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 dum, 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 dum. Da, 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 We all had to walk, you know, behind him with that rhythm. I remember also when they decided, uh, <laughs> Thompson and Larry were conspirers, conspiring and they moved my cancer. I did <laughs> like preview and I didn't have brain cancer anymore. I had built this whole character on a brain tumor. I had a, I had supposedly no hair and I was wearing a, a scarf and they said, you don't have brain cancer. It's uh, uterine cancer. You've had a hysterectomy. So all of a sudden, almost that opening, I was going, <laughs> okay, move it, move it down, move it down. And um, I noticed that Lisa Cromarty, who's playing Maria Dell in a photo, they have her in a wheelchair at Stratford. And I thought that that was interesting because it was definitely a struggle and a physicality that I remember to get it from what is brain cancer when maybe your eyes don't focus and you're just to, to having it in your womb yeah and the only real clue to that in the script i think is in the van scene which is talking about eugene but it was it was a surprise <laughs> and you muriel do you have an interesting story you'd like to share? But this is when we were still in the uh, Friendship Center. And uh, we had a young woman in the back helping with us passing the uh, blueberries and all the stuff onto stage, back to stage. And I was into myself. I was really into this character. And, and later on, someone said, uh, that young woman is really scared of you. And I, and I said, why? What did I do? Apparently, that when I would run off stage, I would say, give me it, give me it, give me it now. Come on. You know, but it was my character that was doing this. <laughs> and this young woman thought it, I was yelling at her. So, <laughs> and I must have run. Those runs were like three or four back and forth. And this poor, poor young woman was out of her skin. She was so scared of me. <laughs> Because I was yelling, give it to me, give it to me, come on, come on, let's go. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and there was that scene at the Globe in the round, Muriel. You have to tell that. Oh, my God. <laughs> you remember <laughs> that? Oh, God. That was just so amazing that we couldn't figure <laughs> First of all, we couldn't figure out what door we were coming out of, remember that, or going into. And so I thought for sure I had it right. And so I came in and I said my first line and everybody was facing away from me. And everybody had to turn around to talk to me. Then I set up everything because I, I had to change clothing. And someone came along and took all my clothing away. <laughs> and I had to figure out what am I going to do? And I think I, I think I grabbed a hold of one of the stage managers, managers and said, take off your skirt. Who was it? Tina Bomberry. Oh, <laughs> right, right, that's right. It was Tina. Super close. Oh. And I, I had to pull her. She didn't want to take off a skirt and I'm pulling a skirt because I had to go back on stage. But also on the uh, backstage, we were all running around. Where, where, do, we, where do I go? Where's, where's the answer? And we, it was like a, a circus. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was scary. Yeah. That was the only time the show was done in the round, eh? It was at the Globe yes. Theater in Regina. That was came out fantastic. That was 
just about. And we didn't yeah. have enough time to rehearse it because the set didn't arrive from That's the right. venue. We were waiting and waiting and waiting for the roof, and it was delayed, and we didn't even know if we were going to have it. Oh. So not under rehearsed to be in the round. <laughs> and we were, the roof was, was so on, like emery board. It was like emery board. Oh my god! <laughs> and and I had to come on stage. Yeah, yeah, I had to come on stage and talk to Gloria, and I had this mini skirt on from Tina. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm all I can think is Gloria, don't laugh at me. I'll lose it if you laugh. At me. <laughs> I need a little skirt on <laughs> on a maple leaf roof that <laughs> that was flat on the floor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh God. Oh, I forgot whoa. about that. I forgot. Whoa. That's so funny. And Sally, do you have a, a, a funny story or an interesting story you'd like to share about, you know, working with Renee and Larry? Oh, it was just, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm just flooded with all kinds of memories now. And uh, it, it was just uh, amazing. Larry and I had worked, you know, many times before this production and, of course, you know, after as well. And, uh, it was just the generosity of their spirits and just just everybody just kind of giving over and you know just becoming immersed in the whole experience and and even afterwards you know thompson and you know his generosity i remember i was doing my uh, degree uh, at mcgill and I, I he was the um the uh, writer in residence at concordia university and i uh I asked him, you know, if he would come and speak at a multicultural um, counseling course that I was taking. And yes, he said yes. And he came and he spoke to my class for, you know, over two hours. It was just, uh, you know, uh, you know, above and beyond. I mean, it, it, I was just so grateful and appreciative. And I, you know, I always will be. It's just fantastic. And you, Anne? Um, I, uh, um, thinking of both Larry and um, Thompson and the script, I was impressed um, in the beginning of the rehearsal period for the first probably couple of weeks, Larry kept opening up the scenes and we'd get off the script and people would improvise on it. So it was never a, a solid thing right, right from the beginning. And he, so he worked that way. Um, Renee, my, my favorite experience with Renee was actually after a show one night and um, I went with a stage manager to, I don't know whose room, probably Renee's, and he had his jeans on that he, weared, or he wore as Nana Bush and it was a light blue jean and he wanted me to paint clouds on, the, on his jeans, like on his legs. So, and then he wore that in the show. So, you know, he was playing birds all the time. So it was, <laughs> that was kind of special. <laughs> oh, that was lovely. That was lovely. Remember when they used to do the distressed jeans with bleach? That's what they were. So they fell apart on him and he tore a piece off and gave it to me. I have it somewhere. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. What kind of impact, like, I, well, how did you feel after the, after it closed, like, did you feel that it really made a statement? Did um, anyone want to answer that? Oh, I, you know, I, I still think about the Red Sisters because it went on for so long. We did it so many places. And it really, uh, wherever uh, I think of it, when I, on the first scene, when I'm sitting on the roof, I say to myself, God, it's great to be Native. It's so <laughs> wonderful to be Native. And, 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 uh, the, the the spirit of, of of a story that comes out of of the the, the native uh, uh, beginnings there, you know, and it, it it was very exciting. And even when we we left, we played it for about how many years? There's many years. It went on and on and on. And I always felt good about it. I always felt I never got tired of it. I think it gave the native people a lot of juice. You know, because they enjoyed seeing it too, and, and uh, I'll I'll never forget uh, the Red Sisters. I, I loved it. It was a great experience. It really was, and we we kept that whole feeling. I think we tried to keep it even when we weren't performing, because I remember one story where we went out dancing later on, and it was a honky tonk place. I don't know, no, 
and some the white guy. Dollar. The silver um, dollar. He was bothering me, you know. He wanted, to, <laughs> yeah. And, and Renee came to me, and he said, and he took me by the hand, and he said, "She's dancing with me," <laughs> you know. And it was so great, you know. You know, and we 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 protected each other, and uh, uh, as much as we could, it was a good production. Yeah, very cohesive. Mm -hmm. Sally, did you want to say? Um, what was the question? Uh, just like at the end of the, the the production, when you were finished, like what kind of impact do you felt? Did you feel one or? Oh yes, I mean uh, undoubtedly, yeah. And I really thought that we, we, you know, we made a huge impression on the theater community and just the community at large. And just to have the experience in Edinburgh, and and then Thompson, of course, you know, was awarded, you know, many times over for that show and. Uh, um, I mean, you know, everybody has a place in my heart for, from, from that production, like with, without a doubt. And uh, I, I don't know if you remember, do you remember, Gloria, afterwards, you, Larry, and I worked on Jessica? By, oh, uh, yeah, that's right. That Northern Heights, and uh, you were nominated for an acting award for that. And even that, I mean, that just kind of carried through, you know, as well. It's just, it's just great. It's just, the, the whole thing was just wonderful. And, it's just delightful to you know to see that it's being performed at Stratford. I think it's like a long time coming for that to happen. I was thinking about that feeling of say being in Winnipeg or being in Portage and uh, people really identifying you and realizing this is the first time that they they could identify an actor off stage that meant so much to them you know people yelling philomena Go, and i'm going up the i'm going up the escalator you know <laughs> philomena, you know and that, and that was like so wonderful of, of being able to come down and and talk to people and, and they're so excited that they know somebody that was on stage and you, then you, you start to realize that there are not enough brown faces. You know, that was when you really started to realize that there's not enough brown faces here. And that coming from the theater itself, wherever the theaters were, you know, they, we had a hard time there trying to get into the theater, even though we were supposed to be in rehearsal, <laughs> trying to get into the theater. And, there, and, and people watching our brown faces saying, it, it was the feeling like, what are you doing here? You don't belong here, you know? And then they called security on us trying to get to the yeah, rehearsal. They, they called security on us. What? Where was this? Winnipeg. Um, oh, yeah. yes. Really? From TC, we showed up. It was the three of us and Gloria. And we couldn't find the warehouse space because it was kind of tucked away. So we went to the actual box office and we said, Hello, we're the cast of the Red Sisters. We're looking for where we're supposed to be. Where's the warehouse? And they called security because there were Indians in the building. Indians are in the building. <laughs> Said security. <laughs> That's when we realize, you know, like how deep the racism goes. Yeah. You know, you at uh, the same time, you know what you are doing is important. Mm -hmm. And you're you're in there, and you you know you know what you're doing and where you're going and the feeling there, and then, and then you get the racism like really hit you on the head, and I'm surprised that uh, more things didn't happen to us really, because we were just walking around the streets and stuff and going into bars and you know doing all that, and nothing really happened to us. Did it? Did it happen? Anything happen to us, ladies? I don't remember. I can't remember anything except that uh, uh, being rescued by Renee. <laughs> but yeah, but I'm sure a lot of things happened. Uh, and I was, I was, I was always surprised of of, of the racism in Winnipeg, and and uh, you know, I don't know why coming from New York it wouldn't, but it was it was more cl closer because there, there there are so many more natives. You can you can't walk down the street and meet natives in New York. You walk down the street in Toronto or anywhere, and you see natives, and they recognize you. And, and you know, it's 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 great. Yeah. Winnipeg was a real turning point in terms of us being aware 
of what we were doing and that it was important. Calling security because there were Indians in the building and that was the same venue we were bringing people, any Indian who said they wanted to come see the show, we were bring, it was like one side, the other, we were bringing them in. So that I think it made a, it made a huge impact on us. I remember talking about it. I don't remember it in detail, but I remember talking about it as a cast, what we were up against and how important it was to make contact with the people that we were passing in in downtown Winnipeg and important that we brought as many people in as we could. Yeah. It yeah. was important, very, rest was was unique. Yes. I, yes. Yeah, completely groundbreaking. Like we weren't hearing our stories, you know, in the theater, we weren't seeing ourselves, you know, on stage. And so, yeah, definitely, you know, historic uh, production, you know, we were all involved in and that kickstarted my career as well. You know, I'm still behind the scenes trying to work in an office, you know, <laughs> but it's been an amazing uh, platform for me and just, you know, and I, it was just wonderful. And I always say, this is how I got my start was with, was working on this original production and I'll never forget any of you ladies ever. Oh, kudos to you. Yeah. Yeah. You planned that whole national tour and it went, it was impeccably planned. Oh. And really, you know, we pulled it off without a hitch. I got to tell you a real quick funny story about Thompson and I when we were talking about like when the success of the original production and then all the phones started ringing, you know, these theaters, we, the Globe Theater, we want the Red Sisters in our next season. And, and so Thompson, and I said, okay, well, let's have a meeting tomorrow, two o'clock, talk about the tour. And so we go sit on the couch. We both have our pads there and say, okay, so how do we do this? He goes, I thought you knew. And I said, I thought you knew how to do it. <laughs> So we didn't have to reinvent the wheel. We found someone, you know, who was a, uh, a touring theater producer that Native Earth was able to hire to put that all together. So at least we had that much smarts to do that. <laughs> but it was I have a question for you, Elaine. Yeah. Having been in that producer role at that time and knowing that the Red Sisters would never have gone to Stratford at that time with that show. What's your reflection on the fact that now it, now it's there? And just some thoughts about that as I'm from the producer lens. Uh, I think it's about time, you know, um, it should have happened maybe many years ago. Uh, maybe the audiences there weren't ready, but you, you could see that happening across the country, like to see uh, that, uh, you know, King Lear was done at the National Arts Center, the indigenous uh, version of that, you know, and that, that our, I was just, I've always been so lovely, you know, surprised when I see one of your names, you know, in a big theater production, you know, it's, I, I've just really been honored to, you know, have been uh, part of all of this, this movement, because that's what we were all part of is a movement and we still are. And our voices are getting out there and it's, yeah. So what was, do you all have like a particular memory that totally jumps out? Do you remember the car seats? The car seats. Yeah. The car seats that were in the window. In the window. <laughs> I loved that. It was yeah, like it was something I missed good. when we went on, on to another stage. Yes. We yes. Didn't have those yes. Car seats. Yes. I loved that. Great. That was it's really, Toronto. really great. Yeah. 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 That was and it was it was interesting because the car seats were on each side of the theater. But somehow you could still feel them in the same vehicle. Yes, 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 yes. That was the magic, you know. And they, you'd be leaning to go and touch someone, and you go, "Oh my God, yeah!" There, it was just magical. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was it. amazed when I never fell off the roof. I always had that, you know, "Oh God, I'm going down. I can't stop here." You were grounded. I never, <laughs> fell, I never <laughs> fell off the roof. I was so proud of that. <laughs> you had no safety harness. No. <laughs> oh. And I was a stunt woman. Crazy. That's all I felt like. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I just slide. I go, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> I had to fall off the roof. Remember that? I had to fall off the roof. Yeah. All these piles of, of uh, I don't know. Oh, right. <laughs> and I'd go, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, your feet would slide. Yeah. It was uh, scary up there. 
I, I also remember um, I wasn't really afraid of the roof. And so I, I guess it was Larry that gave me a note about I had to be afraid of the roof. <laughs> And so I started to work on being afraid of the roof. But apparently what happened was that I gave off such fear <laughs> that people really believed that I was going to fall off the oh. roof. And so I remember it was Mika that came up to me and started to tell me how to stay on the roof. And, <laughs> and I was looking at him like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, you're so afraid that you're going to fall off the roof. And I had to stop and say, you really thought I was going to fall off the roof? I was afraid about that. And he said, yes, weren't you? Because he was giving me a lesson on how to keep a plie, <laughs> how to plie and walk on the roof. And you were acting, right? <laughs> right. And, acting. I, and that's what I said to him. I was acting. <laughs> Then I had to go back. I had to go yeah. back and and uh, get my mind going another way about the roof. Because I used to run down the roof and swing my leg up. I mean, I was a stunt woman. <laughs> well, she had little, little heels on, didn't you? That's right. I had heels on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we had to crawl on the roof. We had to scoot on the roof. We had to dance on the roof. We had to... You know, it, it, it was great. And I, I, you know, I got used to uh, roof roofing. <laughs> <laughs> How about it's you, roof Monique? Acting, roof acting. Roof acting. <laughs> How about you, Monique? I think I told my two big biggest memories, except I guess it's the van scene too, because it was unconventional in that it was very dark. People don't usually do that. And that the intimacy of that, I think that was part of the intimacy that it, that there wasn't a lot of light in that scene, and it was also the scene. I remember Thompson and Larry coming in and saying, "This scene has to be more grounded in what those intimate internal thoughts of what women would really say to each other in the dark, enclosed on a road trip in a van." So that's the scene that we had to my memory, the most um, personal contributions to things that we said in the van. And we were, we were close to each other. And it was different. Yeah, when I think when we went on tour, we just had, didn't we just have like blocks or something that we moved around. But the when the seats were in the windows at the Native Center, it was a very different feeling. Yeah. The play um, as well dealt with so many issues affecting uh, us as Indigenous people. Uh, the story, you know, of uh, Jean Begin's character, you know, came from Helen Betty Osborne and, you know, about talking about murdered and missing women before we were talking about murdered and missing yeah, women, you yeah, know? Yeah. And also, you know, um, racism, we've talked about the alcoholism, you know, the abandonment, um, how, dealing with cancer and dying you know these were all issues still relevant to today and what what do you feel like like when you were doing it like what did you want people to take away from your character and the play Monique one thing that comes to mind is that I wanted them to be able to see that we were artists that we did this not just you know for the hell of it that we we did this because this was our craft and our li life's work and that we knew what we were doing and and that we we came together to tell this one story and that there were there were a lot more there were a lot a lot more where that came from thompson and renee knew helen betty osborne i think school with her in the paw so that story and bringing that story forward was really important you know at the time and for for a long time she was the only name attached yeah you know to missing and murdered women because in in 1990 was conspiracy of silence that 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 i was in and michelle saint john was in that jerry lozon was in so that was like maybe the second time that her name and her story went out you know yeah. for, she was the only name yeah for Probably a good 20 years. Yeah, exactly, exactly. 
Anne, did you want to share? Like the fact that this was something new, and uh, uh, because it's an indigenous play, which had almost never been seen before, there was small stuff. Native theater, like we know, has been go had been going on for a while with small stuff, but this was like big stuff and uh, that was working and it was awesome. So just more familiarity with the, the native stories from the res. It was really good for white people to know. And Gloria, what did you want people to take away from, from your character in the play? Well, the importance of um, old age and acknowledging the old stories and how important the old stories are, the old true stories tell the culture and that that whole idea of the culture and the different nations is, is so different, uh, how important it is. So that I, I always feel very proud, you know, of my nation in the, and telling that old story and those old stories told, told in, in truth, tell so much about how important we are and that we're still here. I still say that, we're still here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> how about you, Muriel? Well, uh, a lot of things run through my head. One of them is why um, uh, Thompson and Larry, uh, why they invited Spider Woman into uh, this piece. And I could never really figure out. But then when you think about it, is that that's what Spider-Woman does. We tell stories. And all of our pieces are involved in the storytelling. And that just cemented that idea of we are telling our own stories. That's what was so important about the Rare Sisters for me, was that we are telling our own stories. And I think it really started to catch on all, all over, you know, yeah, all yeah. over the country and the same, uh, the same in the States. Exactly. And it, carry, it carries on like the old stories about the iceberg and, the, and up into the present time, how those old stories uh, have come into the COVID, you know, and, and, and how it affects us there. And, and it still goes on and, you know, people, say, oh, uh, this nation, that nation, and they tend to leave out the natives. And, you know, and you always ask, ah, 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 we have a story, we have a story. That's our story. This is my story. That's why I have to tell my story. It's so important, it never stops. Exactly. And when um, Thompson got approached uh, by a publisher to first, to put, uh, to print uh, the Red Sisters in, in a paperback, we were so excited, you know, the day that box of Red Sisters books was delivered to the office and Thompson opened it. And I still remember what he said, he goes, see this, I want us to have more and more of these of our indigenous plays published by our own playwrights. I want to see a full library full and observe, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's happened. You know, it's just wonderful to see constantly, you know, that uh, our artists, uh, you know, really picked up you know, we're reclaiming our voices, you know, our presence and everything. And it's just wonderful. Yeah. But I, I was also thinking that there's no boundaries here. You know, uh, coming from the States into Canada as Native people, there's no yeah. boundaries there. And the same way with the stories. The stories, there's no boundary. Now, you know, I work with both um, from Canada and, and uh and the states, I work together with all of them at the same time, like 11 people, but that's on the next show. And that is so important that we don't think of these boundaries, these things, oh, they're American and they're Canadian, oh, those Americans, blah, blah, blah. And, 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 and that stuff being put on us, that we can work together and we have uh, so much, together that you, there isn't that you, it's very hard to get past that pass you have for, it's very hard to have a passport and it's very hard to get you know past the boundaries when you're trying to work everyone together and that was a great idea you know to bring 
everyone together and and uh, that the, our stories are from all over and yet you know we can always pick out you know all other pieces yeah it's important yeah and it's, it's so important also to think of that still going on because now uh, during the pandemic i worked in with a, with an all white group and I, and the story i have to tell is different my story it's different and it has to be different and 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 it, it and it has to be recognized as being different and uh, my story you know in, in in the white world as well as native world i've got to tell my story our story it's different tell people why they should come and see the red sisters at stratford monique always asking me first <laughs> You're first on my screen. <laughs> we are on the, on the nose here. <laughs> we can come back. I guess, uh, I guess uh, to me, uh, because it's historic and because this is a piece that, as I said before, it never would have been a thought to have this play as part of a Stratford season in 1986 when we first did it. Three years ago, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So in that sense, it's historic. At the same time, I think we need to reevaluate what those yardsticks, what those measurements of success, what are the metrics of success that we're talking about? Is that is being at Stratford or the NAC or the Globe, uh, are, those, are those forever our measures of being successful, of, be, of being good artists or important artists or artists that move, you know, that culturally make change. Um, I really, I really question those things. And I'm much more interested in the kind of work that changes the structures that looks at the institution and this systematic racism and cultural supremacy that will still be uh, healthy and well at Stratford once the Res Sisters closes. <laughs> so I'm much more interested in how we make, how do we make that theater that tells our stories the best way? And how do we do that regardless of the systems and structures and institutions, because um, I guess my my personally my interest is much more in dismantling those things that keep the narrative of white supremacy going, culturally or otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else like to add? Why should People come and see the Red Sisters. Well, I think uh, it's going to have. There's going to be a different take on it than than any other production because of the discoveries of the school and the children, and that and uh, that texture of horror uh, felt by all peoples is going to be underlining there, and and the and the white population is going to be feeling very uh, how, guilty or whatever. Uh, so uh, it, it, for they should come to see it because it's just more information around what the news gives us, which is always kind of sad. And this is potentially quite uh, funny. Now, whether or not they recognize the humor, I don't know, but it's, it's a different time. And so it makes it a, a, a different play almost, I think. I think it's just a great opportunity uh, for Stratford to host such a play and, and for the Red Sisters to, to take advantage of all the, you know, production values that Stratford has to offer. And, and just to, you know, welcome such a, you know, a, like an even bigger audience to come and see this, you know, fantastic play, I meet mean, for Thompson, for everybody involved. I think it's just a great opportunity for, you know, for Stratford and for, and for the Red Sisters.
a play like that should have been there long ago. It should have been recognized long ago. And it took a long time coming. And I could say it's about time and that you should go to see and, and, and recognize and, 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 and uh, uh, enjoy the difference, you know, because it, it, it is, I think, different than, than white society. And uh, uh, it's about time. I think Anne was right that it's terrible, but what is happening with the graves and the children, not only in Canada, but in the States. People don't understand all the history behind us and all, all the things that what makes things happen. And, and this is one of them. This is one of the plays that, you know, you start to make, understand. You, know, you, you maybe get a, a, a glimpse into what scoop ups are. You may get, you know, why a, why a child is taken away or, or sent someplace else. And you may get a glimmer of that from the rare sister. You know, that is not always funny. It's not always, you know, there's always a double edge in, in that kind of, of, of work. And, uh, and that's why people should go to see it you know, to, to inform themselves. And it isn't just saying, I'm sorry. It is, it's more than that. You know, it's, it's more that it's trying to make people think further than that. They think further than the skin. Exactly. So the Red Sisters is live now at the Stratford Festival and also will be online. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it online. And I just want to say big nyawach, miigwech to you ladies. I'm going to say your names again. Just give a wave to, as I say your name so people will remember. Okay, Gloria McGow, Palaija Pachnos in the house. Muriel McGow, Philomena Mustel. I feel like I'm, I'm announcing wrestlers. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Monique Mojica, Maria Del Star Blanket. Woo, champion. <laughs> And the world's fastest speaker, Annie Cook, Anne England, and adorable, lovable Jean McGinn Peterson was our little girl, Sally Singel. It was so lovely, girls, ladies. Oh, I can't tell you, you made my day, you made my week. This was lovely to see you all. Thank you. Lovely to see you, Elaine. Great to see you. Good to see you. Good to see all of you. Yes. All the best, ladies. All the best. All the best.